you are now looking at a new Hyundai um, Creta. No, Kona. I think that's a Kona, right? Okay, so it's a Kona with a um, um, with an engine of sorts. Sorry, the lines are blurring. Not only do we have niches and sub-niches to fill every imaginable automotive market gap, sometimes the technology becomes borderline indistinguishable. Exhibit A, this updated Kona. It took three of us, three automotive experts and petrol heads, to figure out which model of Hyundai's extremely stylish compact SUV we were piloting without opening the bonnet. A look under its sculpted front body panel confirmed our suspicions. You are now looking at an Atlas White 2021 Kona 2.0 Executive. It um, should have been easy to tell the difference between this and the 1.6T model which is also available in our market because that turbocharged 1600 has a DCT or automated dual clutch transmission and this 2 liter executive relies on the dreaded one gear CVT or continually variable transmission. Except that this CVT, like most others these days, now simulates gear changes. And it does them really well. Unless you haven't realized it yet, that is a double bonus. For starters, it means that a Pepiol 2 liter can make three motoring journos wonder if it's a 1.6 turbo mill. And secondly, when a CVT becomes so apt at simulating ratios, which it doesn't have, I vote we all stop hurling abuse at the poor things. Right. Downsides? Mmm, like any car in Southern Africa, a brand new Hyundai Kona is expensive. Like 500k expensive. Fuel efficiency is okay-ish with a claimed average use of 7.5 litres per 100 kilometres from the 50 litre tank. But in the real world, this snippy car tempted our right feet too often for us to get even close to that figure. On the upside, performance is pretty good, with 0 to 100 kilometres an hour taking just 9.15 seconds. Hyundai claims 9.7. The brakes are also not bad, as a single emergency stop from 100 k's an hour took just 3.08 seconds and 39.37 meters. Kona's ride and handling are on the sporty or firm side, and you even get some preset drive modes to play with. Passenger and cargo room is also commendable, while everyone agreed that this newest Kona cuts an interesting and unique figure. Buyers down here can choose between black, red, grey, orange, turquoise or this, their psychopathic need to order half a million rand automobiles in primer color. For some bizarre reason, Hyundai thought that crazy shapes and weird colors are daring enough, so they fired a 12 gauge slug right through the skull of interesting interior color choices. We even checked in Germany or the UK. Nope. It appears that every Hyundai Kona on the planet can only be had with this funeral black affair. Also, the cabin layout is a tad understated when compared to the alien exterior, yet all surfaces and switchgear appear qualitative and durable. In true Hyundai fashion, this vehicle outshines most competitors when it comes to standard features while going to the full checkmate with its warranty and service plan, which are like 80 years long or something. The pinched window line and high brows aren't great for overall visibility, but that is standard fare for this market segment. Ditto for the infotainment system, which can play all sorts of media sources and promises to be besties with your smartphone. In summary, the Hyundai Kona, especially in this updated form, falls into the same bizarre category as Toyota's facelifted CHR. It's quirky looking but easy to operate. You can have all sorts of smarty colors but a boring gearbox. Performance is good, consumption is okay, and there's a dealer in every town, who offers easy finance options, so you can quickly forget about the price. <laughs>